evidently uh, the Sheikin 5000 has turned into the Heekin 5000. Uh, my son-in-law Brandon has, uh... hey Jocko, come here. <laughs> he somehow got wrangled into blowing snow this morning. We don't hardly have any, but uh, I think he's having fun <laughs> driving that thing around here. Uh, Jocko was having a little bit of fun chasing the snow too. Um, he's starting to look like a snowman, stupid dog. <laughs> Jocko, come here. Come on. <laughs> uh. All right, guys. So, I have some questions, or actually, probably just more comments about uh, Hoochie Mama. <laughs> oh, Dusty. What have you done? <laughs> Uh, that guy's a character. Um, so yeah, um, I've been exposed. Can't cow call for beans. I just kind of do the kind of do the old lip sync thing and use a hoochie mama to <laughs> to cow call. Um, no, not really. <laughs> but you guys probably did hear. Um, you've probably heard some squawky calls like uh, on day one, I think. You probably heard some squeaky cow calls. That was a hoochie mama. I, I hate to say it. I had to resort to buying a hoochie mama. You know, like, you know, there's question. How do you cow call with a diaphragm in your mouth and with the pull tab in there when you're drawn back? And, and I just couldn't really do it without, you know, risking maybe having a misfire. So, um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't. I didn't try. I did keep the the diaphragm in my mouth when I draw. I tuck it in my cheek and then draw. But uh, in my right hand, in my pocket, I had a hoochie molly hidden there. So just in case I needed to to hit the hit the button. But it, the bad part is, and you'll see in tomorrow night's video. Um, it's not super consistent. I mean, if you get a little bit excited, if you're not exactly right, like on it straight, um, it makes a little bit of a funny squawking noise. So, uh, you know, Will Primo's, bless his heart, he's a, a genius. And I bet, I can't even imagine how many of those hoochie mamas he sold in the past, however long they've been in existence, probably 15 years maybe, maybe longer. Um, it's a pretty neat, pretty neat toy, but um, no, I don't normally use a hoochie mama, just in this special instance. Um, for those of you who do, nothing against that, um, but I will say this, you're kind of limited on your repertoire of uh, emotion and different sounds you can make with them. Um, double down, get a read, learn how to use it, or maybe one of those external bite and blow cow calls. Use all of those in conjunction with your hoochie mama, and now you've got you know a little bigger repertoire. So, anyway, <laughs> nice job, Dusty. Thanks for outing me on that. <laughs> uh, so, had a couple comments about how come you didn't rake? If you'd have probably raked and if you'd have done some, a couple other things, you probably would have got those bulls to come in. But um, I use raking a lot in the right situation. Those bulls were on the move. They were, they were moving. Um, and after being stirred up by me and Doug Flutie, and I don't know if they probably smell this, I'm pretty sure. But I think the probably was probably a, a hot cow or two around, and that's why they kept bugling and they kept on rutting. They were on the move, and uh, they're kind of trying. Every time we get close, and they come in close, and then we they smell us, and then they kind of move off. Um, but when when elk are on the move like that, if you set up and rake, uh, it's been my experience, and you know maybe others have had different um, experience. But usually, if they're on a, if they're heading somewhere raking's not going to stop them they're they're on a mission they're moving uh they're trying to put some distance between you or they don't you know they're trying to get to their bedding area a lot of times the cows are leading them away to their bedding area and they're just you know trying to conduct business along the way and bugle and sniff and uh you know make some new elk babies and um raking's probably not going to stop them um in a certain situation now if the elk if the bull's coming into me and he locks up. Let's say he's locking up. I wait till the bull locks up a lot of times. 
um, or he's maybe kind of slowed down his approach to me, I will add raking to my setup. And a lot of times that will be the nail in the coffin. Sometimes they just can't stand it. They're like, oh no you don't, nobody rakes on trees around here but me. So yeah, raking, use it a lot. Sometimes, a lot of times you didn't see me use it here because situation just didn't, didn't need it, you know? So anyway, thanks for those comments. So, so far here on the series, uh, there's been several questions along the way. How can you tell it's a Doug Flutie, not a bull? Um, and it's tough sometimes, especially, you know, if a guy hasn't hunted elk a lot, um, cause there's some really great callers out there in the, in the woods and Here's, here's my kind of my, my telltale giveaway for that. Um, if I'm always looking to listen to the back end of the bugle. So the beginning, the, the beginning to the high note, uh, a lot of people sound really good. But from the, the high end, the top note, the high pitch note down to the bottom, a lot of times is, is a dead giveaway. Uh, there's a, a lot of people don't have that right tone in there. and. Mine don't even sound like a real elk. I mean, it's, it sounds pretty good for a human, but it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a real elk. And I don't know, you know, maybe some, uh, some of the guys that call with their voice, it seems like there's a richer tone, um, that you just can't get with a diaphragm read there. And, um, so that's one thing I'm looking for. And a lot of times it's the chuckles or grunts is whatever, however you like to call them. Um, some people's, the cadence isn't quite right. It's, it's maybe uh, really quick and then really slow, or it just seems off. You know, you can you can a lot of times telltale by the by the by the cadence them, or just the tone of them. You know, they can be really chirpy, um, really fluty, um, Doug Fluty, and uh, you, you know it's and sometimes it's tough, guys. You have to have those encounters. You have to spend that time in the woods. Um, to get that ear for it and and if from a distance a lot of times you know you'll you've seen in the in the show so far we'll hear a bugle from a long distance and be like ah, but is that an elk is it is it a doug flutie you know we have to listen quite a bit you know so a lot of times i will wait till i get three solid really good uh replies to my calls that i can say yeah that's a that's an elk um, or mm, that's a guy. So, you know, and if, if it's questionable, I'll go and I'll get closer just to make sure because, you know, some people have commented, you know, like they've been fooled, you know, they thought, it, they thought for sure it was a guy and it turns out it was a bull, you know, and I've had that happen before a lot, uh, back in the old days uh, a few times. Um, so I don't discount it a lot of times. If, if it's blatantly obvious, I'm probably not gonna go. But some of those, there's a lot of great callers out there and it's like, eh, that could be a guy. And I've heard some elk that sound like, oh, that's a, that's a power bugle over there. Or that's a whatever kind of, whatever kind of bugle, you know. Um, I've heard some bulls that actually sound a lot like human calls. So you gotta investigate. Um, and unfortunately, um, like in Colorado uh, in 2018, we were up really high i mean really high up on the mountain and we dropped nearly a thousand feet of elevation because we heard this bugle and it had a really really rich good tone didn't sound like doug flutie at all and we dropped down dropped down and we just knew and we hit this big bench and i thought he was on the bench but he wasn't it was once it once we hit the bench it dropped off again and he was down in the, in the next drop off bench there and as soon as we cleared that first bench and got to the edge it's like We've been Doug Flutied. Oh, and that sucks when you're when you're uh, backpack hunting with, you know, 40 or some odd pounds of gear on your back. And <laughs> going down ain't too bad, but climbing back up where you were headed, that's no fun. But yeah, so we got Doug Flutied hard that day. Oh, man. So, and you have to just laugh it off. I have a good time with it. I kind of laugh at Doug Flutie, and I hope Doug Flutie laughs at me a little bit because... You gotta, you gotta have some fun with it or you get mad. You don't wanna get mad, this is, we're having fun out here and that's, that's the name of the game, so. So we had another question about, uh, what about the unnatural noises of walking through the brush? And I kinda alluded to it a little bit in one of the videos um, about, you know, the brush 
scraping across your clothes and stuff. If you're wearing like some nylon stuff, some really loud um, synthetic material like a like a like a nylon ski jacket or something, that sound probably not going to pass for an elk. Um, from a distance, it probably will. It'll be fine. But when you start getting into that that final setup time where they're going to come in to your setup that can get can be a good dead giveaway um my rain gear it has a it has a brushed face to it so it makes it quieter but it is still it it dampens that sound but it does give still have a little bit of a pop when you're going through that brush that that uh that brush that that kind of pops up against it so i'm always cognizant of it but a lot of times it's either in this country it's either stay in the truck or or roll the dice and go for it and, and i you know i've been pretty lucky or you know, it seems like try to try to make your moves when you can where, where it's going to work uh, in that nasty brushy country. Normally, if I'm not wearing rain gear, I'm not too worried about it. They hear you pop and brush and they're like, there's an elk over there. I'm going to go kill him. That's, that's what they think. So um, unless it's a really loud noise on your on the stuff you're wearing or maybe your pack or something, then uh, when you're slipping through the brush, then um, then I'm not too worried about it. Because uh, as you've seen, like, there are a couple times where I knocked an arrow and that bull screamed really close. Um, he's he's popping all sorts of brush. He's making a bunch of noise over there, and a lot of times you would swear it was a guy walking up. It's like is that a guy? But I know it's an elk because just by the way he sounds, his bugle sounds. Don't be scared to take those chances. Um, then right at crunch time and setup time, um, that's when you really want to be careful and, and try to avoid making those loud noises. Um, that way they don't spook off or especially like when you're draw drawing your bow um, like let's say you're drawing your bow and you, let's say you have a, a puffy coat that's kind of noisy um, that just that sliding of the fabric on fabric on your arm that that could if it's dead silent out it could raise some suspicions and and spook bulls off I've I've made the smallest amount of noises sometimes at, when they're super close and and they're and they're just right there to draw my bow and they've like they they hear it they hear it and it kind of messes them up a little bit and hopefully it wasn't loud enough to spook them away sometimes they'll they will um, stop hesitate for a little bit listen again and if they don't hear it again then they keep coming so hopefully you've, you've got your draw your bow drawn at that point and once he starts moving again then you can take the shot all right guys um we want want to remind you about the bow giveaway and all the other cool gear that we're giving away um if you don't know how to sign up so down in here in the descriptions below the video you gotta if you're on your phone you gotta click that little arrow button and it'll drop down and it'll show uh, a description and it'll show the link to my website where you sign up with your email to sign up for the giveaway and also there's a gear list there the some of the stuff i've been using anyway thank you for all the comments thanks for watching tomorrow is gonna be pretty excited i kind of messed up um i scheduled all these videos so once i got them all all finished and and edited and exported then i began uploading them to youtube and then scheduling them because i didn't know how capable i would be with my bum arm for computer and and you know the ability to drive i didn't i didn't know so and i can't really upload them from home because my internet's so crappy so anyway somehow i got my dates messed up and i apologize last night uh day nine also popped up when day eight did and some of you got to watch it and some of you got part way through it got cut off and uh, i took it down i'm sorry i know that was kind of a jerk move you know i am jerk durham <laughs> some might say <laughs> uh, by the way dusty that's the oldest that's the oldest joke in the book when i had a school teacher at school and they're like get to work dirk don't be a jerk, Dirk. I mean, you don't think I haven't heard all these Dirk jokes of what does Dirk rhyme with? Dirt. Dirk. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mom and Dad, for giving me a weird name. <laughs> I like the ones like Dirk Diggler. Uh, there's been a comment. And there's there's a viewer below that keeps on saying we need the, the Dirk Diggler uh, elk call version and, and external bite and blow cow call. The double D... Well, it could mean Dirk Durham, or it could mean Dirk Diggler. You just never know. But anyway, 
make sure you sign up to win. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. And tomorrow night, you get to see some cool stuff. You may even, you may even get to see me make a mistake, if that's even possible. I know Dusty tries to act like I make a lot of mistakes, but I think that's just him trying to shift the blame for me. You know, I haven't really said much so far um, about you know all of his shortcomings, but um, I know he kind of picks me apart. But <laughs> oh no, he's he's awesome. But you're gonna see, you're probably gonna see some mistakes tomorrow. And uh, I hope you guys tune in and watch because it was fun and it was a little bit heartbreaking too. So we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.